The capacitor on the right has been developing blue balls. Did the cap go short circuit because of PCB flexing or what? The cap went short circuit because it was inside of an Apple product. It couldn't live up to its full potential. So it got blue balls and exploded. So today what we have here is a MacBook. Let's see what's wrong with this MacBook and see if we can make it work again. The fan is spinning. Looks like I don't have anything on my screen. Let's see what the voltage is that I get. Let's turn on the good old fashioned multimeter app here. Hook it up to the Paul Daniels software. Zero volts on backlight. Okay, interesting. Well, doing something. Now, what I'm kind of curious, is this that flex gate issue or is this going to be a dead backlight issue? Because remember, this machine, the backlight will stop working if you open and close the device too many times. Put the multimeter in ohms mode. Interesting. 59 ohms to ground on backlight. So the backlight circuit is shorted to ground. That's kind of curious. So let's get this thing out of the case. and uh, That doesn't sound like flex gate to me. That's going to go to ground through the LED driver. It could be that. Or it could be one of these output capacitors at the end. Of which there are many. There are many. It said it could be a shorted connector. Hmm. Let's see if it's a shorted connector. What do you think, Sonia? Let's take the, the screen cable off and see if Sonia is correct. Hopefully not. I'm hoping that she's wrong. Can anybody guess why I'm hoping that she's wrong? Does anybody know why I'm guessing that Sonia got it wrong? Why I'm hoping, not guessing that she got it wrong. Thank God! Sonia happened to be wrong. I'm very happy with that because that means that I don't have a dead CPU. <sighs> you hope Sonia's wrong because of money. Yes. And we still have 61 ohm short to ground. Indeed. I don't want a blown up CPU. That's not good for my day. The backlight capacitors look perfect. On this side, they also look perfect. Do any of these look bad to you? Because these all look pretty nice to me. Leftmost. The leftmost capacitor is just dirty. Can anybody guess what we're going to do here? I'll check it out, James, but you have to promise that you're not going to be pissed at all the things that I say about it. If we have a deal, then I'll take a look at it. Do we have a deal? All right, post it in chat so it's clickable. No donating. Of course, JWC repair. Can anybody guess what's coming up next? What's about to happen to this MacBook's backlight circuit? Also, everybody say hello to Tarman. He's been here since day one. Close to day one, actually. 
Carman, what a, last time I spoke with you, you had changed jobs, some kind of a, some kind of trucking job. How's that been coming along for you? Yeah, I'll take a look at it in a moment. JWC repair. You break it, we fix it. Okay, first things first. It's gonna be fair here. What the fuck is with this infinite scrolly shit? About our computer repair service. So look, look at all this space that you could be using to sell your customer, and it's white. J when, when you were founded, you provide high quality repairs, you use original, like, this is, this is wankery. Less wankery, more what do you do? So, like, what, what, what do you do and if I need your services for something, like, what is it that you actually do? That's what I need to see. I need to see what it is you actually do. So spend more time talking about what you do on this first page. Like, where JWC repair, but what is JWC? What does JWC stand for? Now, I, I have to scroll all the way down here to see what you actually do. So that's, that's part of it. So it says liquid damage, flat fee 150, not bad. Break your screen, don't break your wallet, starting at this. The other thing is, like, what are your prices? So how do I tell what the... I guess I can click it and get your prices. But when I click, I get a, a map page. So it's a good starting website, but the ultimate thing is you've got to grab people in by figuring... Like, this whole thing up here, you're wasting a lot of space. Here, so let me go over my piece of shit website. My website's a piece of shit. But I'm selling on that website. So watch. You go to my site, what we do right here. My name, tiny. What we do, big. My name, tiny. What we do, big. Now, look, I'm using this space to say, look, we're fucking famous. Then you, you, you could find us. Is that clickable? Did I really not make that clickable? Oh, I'm a fucking noob. Holy shit, I'm a noob. All right, never mind. It is clickable. Bam. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah, Genius Bar video, Wall Street Journal, Business Insider, bam. So, okay, should you, be, should you trust me? Yeah, you have the information there. Where am I located? Bam. What I do? big this thing over here where like when i first click onto your page i need to scroll around to see like who are you where are you what do you do you're you this is the first thing that i see when i see your site the first thing i see when i see your site needs to be where are you what do you do and why should i trust you where are you what do you do should i trust you am i on the right page Okay, cool, they do, what I, they do what I need done. Where are they? Okay, cool, they're in my state. Should I trust these fucks? Okay, they've been in the news. That's what you need to have here. And I'm, that's missing from the beginning. So put that shit first and foremost. Like here, MacBook repair, liquid spill, not turning on, USB ports, data recovery, hard drive recovery, iPhone. Like I put all that shit right there where it's idiot proof and easy to find. Over here, when you click on that page, if you want to read more of the wankery, you can. We got some... Ha, like contact form here my address is over here at the top and my address is over here at the side and my address is over there at the bottom yet again if you're and, and you know what the funny thing is I'll, I'm not kidding I still get calls from people saying I'm browsing your website where are you where are you located it's like ah oh, ah oh. but again Apple and here's the thing that I've noticed over the years honestly you don't have to pay some super designer you don't have to pay some genius because all the money you put into designing a website that looks perfect is honestly it's a waste of money i've had sites that were designed for 100 bucks i've had shit i put together myself and i've paid upwards of nine to eighteen thousand dollars to have a website designed i'm not kidding at the end of the day what matters is that you answer those questions like very easily it needs to everything needs to be easily laid out and accessible so you go back to work on this site and make it so that i can figure out all that shit without googling I mean, without searching around. But again, my website sucks, to be clear. This site is a steaming piece of shit. But it's a steaming piece of shit that answers everybody's question. At the top bar, what we do, bam. What we do, bam. Do I have to pay to figure out if it's wrong? No, you don't. Can I send it in if I'm out? Oh, yes, I can. Should I trust this fuck? Bam. Oh, I want to contact them, and I'm too stupid to see there's a phone number here, and a phone number here, and a phone number here. Contact!
Can we please destroy the caps? I'm working on it. DJ Rob William, that's kind of low blow, low blow. I wasn't going to go there. But here's the real thing that matters. Watch this, see? One, two, bam! Number one on Google. Number one on Google Places, closed, wish I was. Mac, number one. Number fucking one. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! I answered one of those. Here we go. Can I replace the lot? I have all these stupid bullshit ass answers that I wrote a long time ago to all these dumbass questions. These are useless pages, but you know, I, ha I had to write answers to all these stupid fucking questions to get up here. But these are real answers. This is not like a stupid SEO ish page. This is. Here's the price for the board for every single fucking model that exists and a link to buy it kind of thing. Uh, let's see. Videos. Number two? What? Oh, well, anyway. Bam! Again! Again! I make websites for a living and your website is great. No need to change it if it's already working or good looking. Thank you, Andre. Yeah, this is that. Here's the thing, if your website answers everybody's questions, which is what I've done here, I've tried to answer as many of these questions as humanly possible. What you find is that more people will uh, show up. I actually have Paul Daniels on my website. Check it out. I tried to give him some SEO juice here. Nail and repair, MacBook repair in Australia. I had to get rid of this because, oh yeah, I didn't credit Paul Daniels. I said Paul Daniels can do this as well, but yeah, that was that was my soldering, not Paul Daniels. You can tell it's my soldering because I didn't fix one of the traces after putting all that work in. Yeah. Paul Daniels. Let's see if a cap has blown up yet. All right, what do you guys see now? What do you see? Tell me if you think anything's funny. The capacitor on the right has been developing blue balls. So this cap that's developed blue balls is most likely the one that's bad. As you can see, the moment I remove that cap, the power supply is now taking zero amps. Thank you for your valuable advice, Les Logo. Well, not just Les Logo, but you need to do, here's the thing. Every time you get a customer, you need to ask why they chose you. What were your questions? What were your concerns? What were you worried about? What were you told? What led you to coming here eventually? And then once you figure out what their concerns were, once you figure out what they were curious about, you're going to make that the front page of your website. Every single paranoid concern a customer has you're going to answer on the front page of your site. Everything a customer tells you that is relevant to why they would use you instead of someone else, you're going to mention on your site. Your site needs to answer all of that. Your site is not about what you think is important. It's about what the customer thinks is important. And you can usually tell when a website is written by the owner versus a customer. 
Because when the owner writes the website, they sit down and they think to themselves, shit, what the fuck am I supposed to write here? Uh, I guess I'm supposed to describe myself. I started in this year and I had a great passion for computers and I decided to bring the high quality of my passion to my loyal and loving customers. Like, you can tell. It's not even like it's bad. It's just it was written by the owner for the owner because the, rather than written for the customer. And the way you write your website for your customer is you, is you implement all the things that they regularly ask you about while you're on the phone with them, when you're dealing with them in person, all the paranoid kind of questions. You're going to take all those little concerns and questions and put them immediately in the beginning. So if someone shows up and says, oh, so uh, do you do liquid damage repair? Your site just failed. Your site failed because they don't know if you do liquid damage repair. So you're going to put in the top of your site. Liquid damage repair. Oh, do you do data recovery? Okay, now you have something else to list. Do you, is it, do you charge only if it's successful or do you charge anyway? No, oh, we only charge if it's successful. Okay, no bench fee, free estimate. I got a tinier needle for my flux, so I'll likely be using less of it. Hypnot says, thank you for teaching me the difference between smearing my asshole and cleaning it. I have since changed how I wipe my ass because of you. Thanks, man. And Twitch still won't give me an agreement where I'm able to stream to YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Even with this quality content that I'm giving the viewers. Teaching people how to wipe their ass here, man. I'm trying. Address the customer's pain points. Exactly, Chuck. You know what? I'm going to give you some assigned reading. Uh, so, James, are you still there? You're going to read a book called Start With No by Jim Camp before my next stream. Read the book in its entirety. Alright, so we're now in the kilo ohms range. And because we're in the kilo ohms range, it's safe to assume that the short circuit is gone. Now that the short circuit is gone, I should be able to plug this in and get an image on my screen. Let's see if that's the case. Did the cap go short circuit because of PCB flexing or what? The cap went short circuit because it was inside of an Apple product. It couldn't live up to its full potential, so it got blue balls and exploded. What, you wanted a different answer? What do you think this is, EEV blog? Do I look like an engineer to you? That's the best you're gonna get. Now GTFO. Backlight! Fixed. Another working MacBook. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.